the boys. It's the boys cast. The lads. It's the boys cast. The dudes. We pair ourselves for boys cast. It's the bros. It's the boys cast. The homies. It's the boys cast. The dudes. It's the boys cast. The boys cast. The boys cast with Dave Smith at Skankfest. Future president. That's been the hot topic, sort of, eh? Presidente. <laughs> Are you sick of two people saying that? <laughs> no, I, I, I really enjoy it. I mean, I don't ever want to be president, but I like people calling me that a lot. What is it? So basically, for, no, no, oh, probably the thing that I was actually making me laugh is you'd be the first president to vape during the... Uh, the the debates. <laughs> oh, it's just, I, I'd like it. I think it's better if it's like a real press conference where I'm like announcing a military action. <laughs> and I'm like, I have approved targeted strikes. Yeah, remember how hard they were going Trump for these, the way he drank water and stuff. He'd be like, look how he's vaping. You'd be like, he's vaping all we're like These motherfuckers, they fight, you know, they got it coming. All right. <laughs> yeah, Yo, we'll be fine. None of our people are going to die, dude. I honestly did get into the drama when you were taking over. Can you explain kind of like layman's terms what happened? Because it, to me, it was almost like inner party drama that you kind of like, wow, whatever, that shit always happens. It's like politics. And then, but your thing, it was like, these like younger guys just took over like a political party and I know yeah. you. So it was like, yo, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of crazy for me too, right? Because it was kind of, it was like the, the libertarian party is the third biggest political party in the country and they're like they're they're like we're the libertarians but then there was this whole group of like people who are libertarians outside of the party that i kind of you know was one of and then started to rise up and be kind of one of the bigger voices in and then we hated what they were doing with the libertarian party and they it's not even just that they could have just done their own thing and we probably wouldn't have even noticed but then they started talking shit about all of us like the the head of the Libertarian Party, the last guy or two guys ago, he started like calling Ron Paul a racist and like all these people who we love. Yeah. And so then eventually a, a few of us were like, you know what? We're just gonna take over this party and make it ours. <laughs> and, we have audience. And, and they were like, okay, sure, you're gonna come take <laughs> our party over. And then we were like, no, 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 we're actually gonna do that. And then we all joined and took it over. Is there any sort of like internal election, like electoral? Process? Yeah, it's a, there's a whole like dumb. Uh, you know, democratic democracy sucks. Yeah, yeah, but there's there's a whole process of how you have to go in and register and then vote. But our people were that pissed off and were that willing to be like, no, no, no. If there's going to be a third party that calls itself libertarian, they should at least represent what most libertarians believe in, which yeah. is not like what was coming out of the LP was like, you must be anti-racist or whatever. Yeah, like, like, no, that's not mixed up with that. That's stuff. not what we're for. <laughs> so like, stop tarnishing our name and then and yeah we took the whole thing over so it's it been is, an interesting thing i guess a lot of people will say about the libertarian party it's almost like it's a lot of people that they weren't able to get a seat in the other party so they'll kind of it's almost like a career move of like it's like the guy who bees like a weatherman but he really wants to work at cnn or something you know what i mean <laughs> yes well there's so there's been a lot of that there's been a lot of that, but I think what our camp who just took it over, which is like the Mises caucus, if people don't know, that's we are the ones who just like won every seat. And what is so, that? And so like, like I all, kind of know generally what it is. But like. Well, ba it's basically the Ron Paul libertarians. Right. It's kind of like the, the libertarians who are like really about like being opposed to like the war, uh, being opposed to wars, being opposed to central banks, being opposed to like crazy government authoritarianism, but not the ones who and are the pussy like, libertarians. The do. pussy libertarians are like, okay, well, we believe in freedom, and so your six year old should have the freedom to be a girl, even if he's a boy. And we're like, no, that's yeah. not really what they're, we were They're kind of taking that logical like, thread. They're, sort yeah, of like they're, they're just sort of trying they, to like make, say the same thing everyone else is saying, yes. but like string together some like they, freedom logic or something. They try to almost use it as if like, well, our philosophy is about like liberation from all abstract constraints, like your dad's a dick or whatever. <laughs> you know, you're like, no, that's not like what we're about. What we're about is like this real shit that we think actually matters. And so there were a lot of people like that who were like, okay, well, they can't win as a Republican or a Democrat anymore, so maybe they'll come over to the Libertarian Party. But I think our thing is much more like, no, we really don't believe in what those people believe in. Yeah, and so you we're see what you see through them when they're trying to pull that shit, where they're trying yes. to be like, we're coming over, and you're like, ah, I don't know. Like, well, even like, well, they have a stronghold on it, sort of, right? For, yeah, for a while. Uh, people were even saying to me, like, recently, 
because uh, Tulsi Gabbard just left the the Democrats, and they're like, oh, she should come over to the Libertarians. Don't you want her to come over? And I'm like, if she's one of us, like if if <laughs> yeah. she if she were to fucking reach out to me and be like, hey, I've been reading about the shit you guys believe in, and I believe in that now, I'd be like, yeah, absolutely, come over. But if not, yeah, not just no. To, yeah, go to fucking Yang. Yeah, thing. I'm not just trying to get like the most popular fucking person I can get. It kind of like, sort of does. Yeah, because you're right. The you want to have that thing where the thing you're saying is almost bigger than the people. The people could could switch to someone else. You know. Well, the point of like if you have like a third party, that's like, well, look, this is what we believe. the The point isn't that you're like we, obviously right now. It's not like, oh, we're going to win over, we're going to win. The libertarians are going to get 51% <laughs> yeah. of the population and we're going to be the fucking, but, but the point it. is. Hey, imagine that, that. You're like, that's crazy. All right. <laughs> Man, if that happens, I'm going to look like an asshole after all this. I'd be like, when you're the be like no, you win. And you're like, ah, that's shit. Your, yeah, that's your speech. You're like, pretty wild, right? <laughs> Dude, my wife's going to be like Melania, but who speaks fluent English. And she's like, she's just going to be like, I didn't fucking agree to this shit. Yo, okay. You, you would be, that is, I mean. Sorry, let me just finish your thing. Yeah, well, no, I'm just saying with the point, but the thing is if you have a little group, right, like a small, a third party, and not a small third party, like the Libertarians, compared to the Democrats and Republicans are small, but they get millions of votes for their, for their presidential candidates. And there's like a lot of power in that. And that's kind of like the idea of like taking over that party, that it's like you can kind of use that in a way where, so if there's like, um, let, let's say you're polling at 3% in a statewide Senate race, but the Republican is losing by 2%. Like your 3% all of a sudden is a big deal. If you and, then get you, them to- and then you could be like, hey, if you guys run Lindsey Graham, we're going to ruin it for you so you can't win. But if you run Rand Paul, we'll let you win. And so now even though you're only polling at 3%, you could have a huge Powerful impact thing, on yeah. that. So that's kind of the idea is like people who actually care about like moving things in a better direction and just being like, yeah, you know, we don't want to be a fucking country that fights fucking dumb wars and a country that spends ourselves into debt. I don't know. I just want to have like a good fucking a good society for my kids to grow up in. And Running on things are getting pretty weird. <laughs> I just want everyone to have a skank. Fest <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They can grow up. Skank. I want my kids to have a skank fest of their own yeah. one day. Sk- <laughs> skank <laughs> fest is a basic <laughs> human right. <laughs> His official platform, but it is. It really is. For all. <laughs> you know what? The I felt like the one thing that uh, like a lot of people that lose, unless they're you know super saying all the exact like industry stuff. It's almost like if you want to say anything interesting, and it's not just in uh, politics, but in like entertainment. If you want to be a podcast, if you want to do anything interesting in any sort of cultural space, you have to be okay with a lot of people saying bad things about you. Yeah. And I feel like so many people are so afraid of that that it just they'll lose or no one will care. Whereas like kind of even what you're saying, like even if uh let's let's say you were saying something about like guns and they're like, well, some kids are gonna die, and then a lot of people will kind of be like, uh well, not really either. And you're just like, Yes, that is correct. Some kids might die <laughs> yeah. because of this. That's Yes, there's. It's not all positive. What I'm saying, every thing has. And you, I think you said like owning the negative parts of your uh, of your arguments because every thing has like a negative part, and they try to pretend they don't exist. You're like, it's like when last part of this is like when they say inflation or whatever, and you go, well, jobs will go down a little bit, and they go, no, they won't. You go, okay, they will. Just admit that yeah. and like, own it. I remember uh, hearing when. Does that make uh, sense? Yes, yes, completely. I remember when. Uh, um, uh, when Biden was running for president, so I, he they did a debate. Um, it was like the first post-COVID debate uh, right after COVID, right after the lockdowns happened, and it was him and Bernie Sanders. And I think Bernie had just had a heart attack. Like they yeah, were yeah, wheeling yeah. Bernie Sanders out there to like. And they, I don't know if you remember this, but they did like a debate. It was just the two of them, and they were like socially distanced. Like it was, we were all in the height, like the first two weeks of lockdowns. And then they were like, "Well, we have a presidential debate, so here's what we'll do." And like the studio was like everyone yeah, was, was like set up, and they were like way far away on the podium. Yeah, and I do shit. remember this. I think. And I remember Biden's thing is he looked into the camera. And he went, look, if you elect me, I promise everyone will be made whole. Like whatever money you lost from this lockdown, you'll get that money back. Whatever this cost you, <laughs> we will get. And it was like so that like to me was like the perfect like encapsulation of what politics today is. Yeah. Is because we're locking down the country. And let me just tell you, 
this will cost you nothing. Yeah. And then you're like, like this will, there will be no costs associated with shutting yeah. everything down. And you're like, are we, what like adult <laughs> is supposed to believe this? Like, how could anyone look at that and go, there, are, there will be no external costs Kids of any of this? Well, it's because nobody asked them, you go, how? But, that's, no, but, but it's connected to what you said, yeah, where you're like, no, if it. you ever tell the truth, we're now in a world where you'll be beat by anyone who's sure. like, but there's a problem with the truth. Go, you yes, know? that's correct. That's I remember it. being, uh, my sister is like, my sister's real, real smart. And she's a, a college professor at a, like a, a really good fucking university. And she's very, very smart. Prager you. But her, yeah, prager <laughs> you. And she's <laughs> almost as tenure. Uh, but, but she's, her politics are not good. But she's a great person and she's very smart. But all her friends are college professors. And I was at her, my sister's house. And I'm at my sister's house, my wife at my sister's house and my sister and my brother-in-law and like my family and her friends who are all college professors. And we were, we had dinner. You and, and a bunch of college professors. We were, yeah. <laughs> your, your wife's probably like, got Dave, real. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, Dave, Dave one day. enjoy your veal. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm like, I would have fucked you in this way. hand you the jewel like a pacifier. <laughs> just be like, just Dave, Dave. We're like, okay, okay. <laughs> no, but we're in the living room. We're having a drink after dinner. And there's a, a this guy who's a college professor. And this motherfucker is brilliant. Like, I, I've talked to him a bunch. He was like a fucking expert in like uh, ch uh, the history of China. And he like fucking lived in China for years. And he's teaching me all this fucking shit. Like, he's just really, really smart. But he, I remember we're in her living room having drinks. And he like kind of leaned in at one point. And he goes, he goes, I'm going to be honest with you, dude. I actually agree with a lot of your politics. And I was like, and what are you doing? What, what, why are you whispering, <laughs> motherfucker? Like we're in my sister's yeah. living room. Yeah. Like you're safe. Just talk to me like it's a fucking a, yeah, normal like person. KGB like shit. even there. Yeah, but isn't that? It's almost it's like really we live like in North Russia. Korea. Or, like he was yeah. like worried that one of the other people there might sure. hear him. Well, that'll get around the, the school, and yeah. they'll be like, "Yo, you know what? He's, he's like not he what he is. is. He might be right that like yeah, he's like I'm saying something that could ruin me, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm I'm telling you. I'm Did I hear your podcast is entertaining? Yeah. Like, dude, I I actually fucking think you make a lot of sense. Yeah, like, but it's a weird thing where you're like, yeah, oh, I get it. Like a lot of people, even people who are really fucking smart and really know their shit are just not built for that. They're not built for, and this is why through COVID, so many people were fucking scared to like come out, even really smart people who knew yeah. what was up. They're scared to come out because a lot of people like respond to social psychology cues. And if everyone's gonna call you a fucking like really mean name, they're like, I'm not ready for that. Sure. And then you have the occasional person like the Alex Berenson, who's like, I love the idea of that. Yeah. Some people fucking fuck. call me yeah, a Nazi, please. Sure. You know? But I mean, the amount of people they did that and then you're like, yeah, that person just said something and they lost their job, so I don't. No, but this is why I kind of. Like, I don't really wanna do that. Like you stick, sure. your, you stick your neck out and you go, okay, well. That's, uh, Which is what we've started to say because a lot of times people will be like, everyone needs to stand up for this and this and that. And I'm like, yo, he's not like that. Like, yo, I have friends and I'm just like, no, they shouldn't because it's like, you know, the, the idea of like, sometimes you need to stand up to your bully. It's like, you ever seen the kid that like, try the wrong kid that's like, today's the day this ends and the, the bully's like, yeah, okay, I'm just going to kick the shit out of you harder. The guy, yeah. the guy just gets yeah. kicked up. They put him in a puddle and he's like, well, that was bad advice, Dad. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's nothing's ever nothing's ever so black right. and white. Nothing's ever so black and white. Really. Yeah, you exactly. got to stand up to your fucking bully. And I was like, oh, this guy's robbing me at gunpoint. Nah, nah. I'm standing <laughs> up today, to this fucking man. bully. Nah. And you're like, probably, you know what? Just let this guy bully you yeah. and take your wallet. Well, so that is, there's right? A, there's other, yeah, you go, the best, I don't know what the best case scenario is in that thing. And that's what people go, well, what else do I do? And I go, yeah, you're right. It's a complicated question. Well, what, like, what, maybe right. you try to make friends with the right people. I don't know, maybe, like, who knows what exactly exactly you do and then and that right so it's like a real fucking little nuanced lane you got to fill so like you guys are a good example of like where okay yeah there's a lot of people who like lost their jobs and their lives were ruined for not following like whatever the woke ideology of the day is but then you guys found a way to make fucking videos that are really mocking it <laughs> but they were funny enough where enough people loved it that it's like, oh, you guys actually made a big thing off of that. Sure. And still, there's still people who would like to ruin you if they could, but you've all, but then there's also like the angle of you like, found, you found you, and you space. haven't quite given them like the excuse. A lot of people really fuck up by giving them the excuse too. Like it's, there's this thing where Kanye a lot of people, West. that is a good, <laughs> that is a solid example, but a lot of those alt-right guys, like I feel like, I feel like half those kids didn't even believe the most fucked up part of the shit they were saying. No. It was just like, well, if you're gonna call me a Nazi, 
for whatever I say, I'm just gonna be a Nazi. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, I'm yeah. just oh you call me a Nazi, then I'll just be a Nazi. And then those go, you know what? Hitler was great. And then they get fucking And then canceled. you're kind of like, are you a Nazi? And you're like, and you're like I don't even know anymore. I don't and know. then they, they realize they're like, oh, now I gave them the excuse for everyone to go, well, don't we have to cancel Nazis? And now, okay, now you're fucking ruined and you can't get a job. Yeah, and all of course, this shit. for like so, ever. And just because you like had this weird phase where you're just like. <laughs> no, it, takes, it takes like discipline, right? And I think that the same way that certain people aren't meant to like stand up to a mob, also certain people aren't meant to have like a spotlight on them while they're kind of being manic. Like, you know what I mean? Yep. It's like. Yo, it takes like it does take so much discipline because you're right. You do want to like I often you do want to do those things, but it's like you're playing chess, not fucking hitting each other with clubs. It's like a, you know, it's like if you want to do anything good artistically, at least anyway, it's going to take are, like tact. Right. So it's not just about like like with the example of yelling at your Robin. wife in a fight or yeah, you know what real men do is you know maybe just come home a little later every day for the next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But also not being, but also not being like, okay, so you don't ever want to like be like, um, like you want to be the man in your relationship, but you also don't want to not care about what your wife is upset about. Like the, the totally. correct answer is actually that you have to find like the right kind of middle ground with like all this nuance. And so with a lot of this stuff, it's like, you, you know, with the example we were just saying, like of like standing up to the bully when a guy's mugging you at gunpoint. It's like, nope, not now. Yeah, pick your spot. In this, in this <laughs> scenario, the, the yeah. correct uh, reaction is just to fucking concede that this guy's got you. But then at some point when there's like a winnable fight, it might be like, no, you have to pick your battle right now and fight that guy. So that's kind of the weird thing. And then you have, there are some people who and lose their jobs. And very much like that. Comedy is so much like that where you're like, oh, what's the correct scenario to do in this thing? And you're like, maybe it was to like have this big blow up on this guy and maybe yeah. it wasn't yeah and you and then you find that out that's a big part of doing stand-up is figuring out exactly where that line is and then you go a little bit over it and then you're like oh but if i come right up to it yeah. and don't cross it then that's perfect then that's the perfect fucking place to be so so yeah a lot of times i see like people's you know meltdowns it's like i don't see it as like brave i see it as like undisciplined almost yeah you know what oh. i mean as like a, a, a like an mma guy that starts biting the guy or something yes <laughs> no what's what's brave is like like uh, in comedy, like uh, Chappelle on uh, for what it's worth. The how old is fifteen really? That's like you know the joke I'm yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, That's yeah, the exactly. perfect example of like brave. He took it right to the end of where the crowd's like, where are you going with this and one? then by the time he hits the punchline, they're like, fuck, that's hilarious. Sure. That's, part of, that's the thing. Losing the whole crowd and just like fucking being like, fuck all you fucking cunts. They're like, all right, this yeah. is weird. That's not brave. That's just undisciplined. Like you're Unless saying. you're filming it to show to someone else. Like unless no, they yeah, were like the, the gay. Yeah, right, <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> like and then that, would, that could be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. like but, what are you yeah. optimizing for, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. anyway it's all kind of like it's interesting how all these things kind of like you know are they're kind of similar like there's things about comedy and like your views in the world and all of it it's all kind of an art form in a way but we do we live in really really crazy weird times and that's not that it's the worst With times the ever too. there's been there's been worse times than what we live in the, these are just particularly weird times yeah. that we that's live in so it's like, hard to know how it's going to shake out too that's yeah. like mm -hmm. i mean generally you never really know but this one you're like this is so many unprecedented things happening yep. simultaneously that are all like pretty large scale what yeah. do you how that's do you think shakes out in the next 10 years like you know i, I like really, is it more decentralization or is it more like what is your version what's i guess i probably the real answer is you're like percentages of what the possibilities right. are but so i don't like there's no i don't like even saying like oh what's gonna happen because i think it's like what could what's, what's gonna happen is what people make happen so it's the question is what people are, are gonna you even do talking like is the changing those outcomes right the future isn't predetermined no. and if it was i wouldn't even fucking I talk about job, any of yeah. this shit like why would i it's like well it's <laughs> yeah. gonna happen anyway um I think that the great, we almost have somewhat of a binary like split where we're either going to have some really creepy like technocracy type shit, you know, like a China um, kind of style. Yeah. Well, but like kind of, yeah, something like that, like where there, you're like, well, there's a digital government backed currency Did you see and they the can shut you off anytime or we're going to have a massive decentralization and break up all this fucking power. And you're going to see like, I think like maybe even secessionist movements where Texas breaks off, California breaks off all these countries. And I think that's the much better outcome 
than like centralized states getting more and more power or we're all going to die in nuclear war within the next month yes which is also, <laughs> pop, what is also the, possible what are, the poss- what are the chances of that it's, it's like crazy. Crazy. <laughs> no, no, I mean the US government was buying the radiation pills you see that they were like yeah. the US government literally just put in a huge order for like radiation pills you see them running ads in New York <laughs> about yeah, what, yeah, to do what to if do if a nuclear bomb explodes. Yeah. You know. And then the, the things are all pretty, like, I can't imagine that would help. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, none of it's good. No, it's all it's basically... It's not honest either, because you're like, that's a different thing. If you're in Manhattan, there's nothing you can do, because oh, they, that's they're, where they're going to strike, and you're going to die instantly. But the fact that they're running these videos, like, that they're like, um, go inside, stay away from the windows. Yeah, that's yeah. what it was. And you're like, wait. What? No, so the question is, why would they even be saying that? And the only thing I can think of is that you know they go when if the moment were to come when it's announced they want people not to panic because they're trying to get their yeah, fucking, fucking people fucking out luck. they're trying to get their they're trying to get their elite <laughs> people to fucking flee where they need to flee so they're like you just go inside and just don't worry I everything's mean, there must gonna be, be uh, there must be like you must have several hours of notice like if a nuke like gets fired on you know Manhattan. It's, it, I assume it's coming from what overseas or some shit. Mm, I mean, I don't think I don't know about several hours. I, don't I know think that it if it was coming from Russia, I'd have to look. I know people who fucking know this shit a lot better than me. But or like I think whatever, that a, a I think like hours. you might have thirty minutes or oh, something 30 minutes? like that with yeah. what what Putin claims he has. Yeah. I think it'd be something like and that. And that's such a nightmare. Now, we we could fucking nuke Russia from our. I mean, we got fucking like dual missile launchers in Poland. Oh, for sure. That shit, we could get over to Russia quick. Yeah. But it's doesn't really matter. Yeah. Like once they're off in the air, That's they're it. all off in the air. Like this is the fucked up thing about nuclear. If yours go off, them. the other ones go off. As soon as one is launched, a whole bunch are going to be launched, and then a whole bunch are going to be launched in response, and then basically the world's and over. The world so dies, now yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. Do you have a bunker? But no, I really want one. Um, but I don't have one yet. If you're listening, if you have a bunker for me, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the a scary thing in New York, area, though. I would love a fucking seat it's like in that no, bunker. Nobody has a car in New York, so like to get out without a car of the city. Oh, you're when, fucked. When everybody, you're not gonna get out. If anyway. you're in That's New what I'm York saying, city, but everybody's trying to like panic. You're, and you're probably like, better off yeah. running than you are you, like driving. You're not running you away from so a nuke. Fucked. But you know, fucking, you aren't. Dude, I was fucking me and me and Tim were talking about it uh, on on my podcast here. And, uh, yeah, with Tim Dillon, we're talking about it and like, and I fucking like I I, you know, I tried to like break all this shit down and like I was just I had a clip on Rogan that I was on that went, went like real viral and like where it's like I'm going like well look here's what happened and here's why we're provoking Russia and here's the whole history of the conflict. But like Tim just fucking he just goes, do you really care? Like, it's like. <laughs> He just brings it down so simply. He's like, you care about the Donbass region? Yeah, yeah. Well, you care who rules Donbass? Yeah. We want to risk nuclear war over. But the truth is that this is like the closest we've been to nuclear war since at least the 80s. Yeah. Like there's really never been any. We're, we're actually like, I mean, if you just think about it, we're like, okay, we are like actively arming a war on Russia's border. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking about like fucking like miles off of Russia's border, like a few miles, like 5,000 miles from our border, like three miles from their border. And we're sending all these weapons in and we're going, and, and Biden and the administration is going, we have to win. Yeah. We must crush them here. Yeah. And they're going, you crush us here and we will fucking nuke you. Like that's what they're saying. That's, yeah. he, and, and Biden said specifically, he goes, this is not a bluff. This is not a bluff. We will launch nukes. And so I'd still like to think the overwhelming odds are he wouldn't actually do that because uh, fuck the whole world's over if he does that right. and then you'd think like even people under him maybe just wouldn't follow the orders even if he was like send the nukes there'd be someone who's like maybe that guy has a kid at home yeah. you know and yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, like yeah. no there's usually like one like, guy that sort of stops it that, right? so that's what yeah that's what you hope but the chances are a lot higher than they were in fucking 1995 for sure yeah. like a, a lot worse and that's not good you know what's kind of making me like i was thinking that if you know even i feel like people that are like into all the uh whatever industry mainstream stuff will say like people don't really get canceled like you know what i mean so you go okay yeah, you're right they tried to make alex jones disappear he probably made more money and maybe made his voice more important and you might say the same about andrew tater all these people right and you're like it is kind of true that yeah you used to be able to but now no one works for you and you don't really have that and you go you also can't cancel countries it's almost like they still think that they could like they can make people disappear we can make your country disappear and it's like you're like oh for five in all of them yeah. but they still keep just trying to you know what i mean like yeah. they're like we'll make your country not a country and it's kind of like 
I don't know, like Vietnam or whatever, where it just kind of goes on forever. It's like, that's well, how all of the, the wars are, even in culture or something. But they just, it's like they have more... And then you go, you kind of lost that fight. It's like the Conor McGregor just keeps like not really winning and everyone just keeps letting him fight. Yeah. And he still has this like idea that he's, it feels like the United States government kind of operates like well, that Because the, they perceive themselves as the, you know, the world's you go, police, If right? you look like, at the record. Like, they yeah. feel like they're like, we have to do this. They don't. Well, they'll say shit like where they're, um, I remember like Hillary Clinton said at one point, she had some line. Where she goes, it just uh, it shows you like how much they think of like America as the empire. Yeah, like we just own everything. But she goes, she said, uh, Russia has amassed troops right on Russia's. Uh, she said, right on NATO's doorstep. And by that, she meant, it, yeah. she meant Russia's border. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because I know. NATO has moved all the way over to right. Russia's border. And then she goes, look, they got their troops right on NATO's doorstep. Like, as if they moved over to yeah, Germany. Yeah, exactly. You yeah, know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But it's kind of like, she's like, well, the whole world belongs to us. Yeah, so yeah, why yeah. would you I mean, not? Dude, and there's, the, there's this tremendous, like, great. like this hubris. Like, that yeah, we yeah. can just do anything. Yeah. And fucking take out Manifest all. Manifest destiny. Now, I don't agree with those sure. people. You know, you could think of those examples. Like, I think Andrew Tate's an interesting, and I don't know that much about him. I heard so much more about him after he got canceled than I ever did before. He yeah, was. I haven't watched so, any of it either. So I don't know. You know, <laughs> I've, I've I've seen like a few clips from him and stuff, but I don't really know like that much to comment on him. But I will say that there are a lot of people like if you say oh if you get canceled it only makes you bigger no well, I don't like, think that's always that's true. Like, I mean I just know a lot of people who they don't were, cancel like, the message very big. And got completely canceled and are like removed Dude, almost Andrew from the Tate public conversation. Like, sure. If you go look at him, like him just after the fact, because he's like on Rumble now. Well, I'll tell and you, are like he lost a well, huge he's done, of his but, but he's you don't done cancel interviews the with. He's well, sure, but he's done interviews with Pierce Morgan and yeah. with uh, uh, you know uh, Patrick Bet David and the things that get millions of views yeah, and yeah. stuff. But if you go to like okay, Milo Yiannopoulos however you feel about him was huge right. yeah. like he had millions of followers and whatever he did like generated a big story and like what's he doing now no, no, no. I okay. have no idea he's so completely I, I removed think from multiple things are happening simultaneously right like if you think of even just like a way a band is, right? Like when you think of like Limbus get at their prime and then two years later you go, you heard of what they do? It's like he got kicked out the internet. You go, I don't know if that was the whole reason. Like th right, people right. do have a rise and fall, especially in the like, I'll become the number one century. Like no one stays that forever. So people so, so have right. their, so, so, so Milo might have time. fallen anyway. Not like, like that. His, well, his moment might have come and passed. Everyone, But we yeah. don't know because he got no, fucking banned off all this shit. So maybe that's what would have happened or maybe he would have been bigger now than bigger he than ever was yeah, before. Yeah, he could have so a show on I, Fox or something. Yeah, like, I, I just don't know. I, but so there's a lot of that shit and there are a lot of people who aren't even names that probably any of us would know who just fucking get kicked off that shit when they were we're just I fucking mean, getting dude, popular. The so, Trump disappearing you're, you're from right. the, you know, uh, yeah. the, the entire like the discussion in the world. Like the way he was, you know, he, well, was he dominated everything. He doesn't get a, a a voice in it anymore. That's what I'm saying. Which yeah. is like he's still part of the discussion, but it's just what everyone else is saying about him, yeah. rather than him getting to say the thing yeah. that they have to react. Yeah, to. Yeah, like so unless it's you a even, real interesting thing. Yeah, like unless you watch like OAN or something where they might cover his rallies. Yep. Like other than that, you're like they don't even. You know, they talk about him a little bit. They'll give a little like snippet of like something wacky that he said at, uh, but it's all, all, always like a short gotcha. Yep. And that's it. Like none of the substance is just like short little gotcha, something gaff, and then move on. Yep. Like, isn't he dumb? Yep. And then just like, gone. no, you definitely, I, I mean, it kind of reminds of like a guy that like was on the Howard Stern show, then he's not. And you're like, what's that guy up to? And you go, you know, no one checked. Who the fuck knows? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's, I know people who I liked who were like kicked off YouTube and then I've even seen their thing where they're like, come subscribe over at this website yeah. and they're like, totally. And I just <laughs> never go because I don't it's know, hard, dude. Yeah. I, just, I go on YouTube and it recommends shit to me and I don't know. Yeah. It's always telling me I want to watch Ben Shapiro and I've, I don't, but they're yeah. always telling me <laughs> I do. Like, yeah, they got it. I was like, dude, we know who you are. <laughs> you want to watch Ben really Shapiro. Are. The algorithm right. does yeah, that. Yeah, the the algorithm's like, we got time, man. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. You're like, I don't really know if I want to watch Ben Shapiro. They're like, Dave, it's, Dave, it's us here. Dave, you want to watch Ben Shapiro. Trust that, me. Dude, you're, Dave, your wife's in the other room. Let's He's about to on. dunk on a nine-year-old. And, and eventually, you're, they're kind of right. Like, eventually, you're like, your wife's in the other room. And I'm like, she is. Yeah, All, right. All right. All right, Ben, what All do right. you got? And he's like, well, let me tell you about the Democrats. And, like, All right. and then All Dave's right. wife comes back, and you're editing Ben Shapiro destroys clips. <laughs> you go, huh? What? I'm coming to bed. I'm coming. Give me a few minutes. Yeah. He just dunked on the 17-year-old. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> it's fucking it's so cool <laughs> you haven't done a ton of the college kid debates you actually do try to debate like real people mostly oh, I, yeah because i have you done any of shit. the like debating like just a total retard like a, i've done a few i've had a few debates where i where but it was always like where i didn't realize till we started debating that the person was like, oh, you're, you're, like, you don't oh, know what you're, you're fucking about. really have nothing. Um, but I don't particularly like that. I don't. And, and the people I'm talking about were not 18. They were like adults who just happened to turn out to be retarded. Yeah. But that, like, I don't, I hate, I hate fucking owning an 18 year old. I yeah, just think that's it's like, it's, I, I think probably for a period in time, like around 2016 or something, when Milo and Ben Shapiro and they would go to college campuses, and there's fires. It, it and like might <laughs> have been. A, it might have been necessary. Yeah. To like demonstrate to everyone that these fucking college kids who are saying all this shit is like she doesn't know what she's talking they, about. They don't know what they're talking about, and if they're actually confronted with anyone who's kind of knows, they fall to pieces. So that was maybe necessary, but at a certain point, you're that like, was a moment. And, but, well, their voices yeah. were being kind of disproportionately heard for some reason yes so, so like there was necessary to have that counterbalance and, and like, sure so that period of time whatever it was when the big like uh you know you the say era. you say that yeah when the the, the, yeah. the glasses the glass and like, like, that, like, like, yeah. that natural <laughs> thing okay fine so maybe that was a time that was needed but after a while i feel this way like a lot with with trump too this is why i don't want trump to run again and i don't want because it's like okay that was good that was almost like maybe necessary for the time yeah. for you to just fuck up. Oh, he owned all the libs. Yeah. But at a certain point, you're like, okay, we need a little bit more than that. We need a little bit more than just like, oh, you dunked on an 18 year old. We need you to like, let's let's actually have a really good conversation with two 45 year olds who like <laughs> yeah. know what the fuck they're talking about. And like, it's like, what are we really doing here? Sure. Like, what's the, I think know? there's a lot of things. It's kind of like, you know, even like a, you could, I always say this about like dudes at 18, they're like, a lot of them need a guy to shake them up, like a military sergeant type guy. Right. Or, you know what, like, yeah, if you're a weight loss, like, you know what I mean? You're like 400 pounds. A certain type of dude might respond to a guy that's like, get your fucking shit together. Fuck you, stop being a little bitch. But like, once you're down to your like normal weight and you're actually in pretty good shape, you're like, I don't know if I need that guy still. You're yeah. like, you motherfucker. And you're like, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm working out. Like, we're actually, Mr. Let's talk Mr. About, Mr. Like, Goggins, I don't need this yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, let's, can we just, well, what, I'm actually more having a nuanced conversation about like, uh, what nutrients we want to get in the diet and yes. like, what exercise. And he's like, you fucking nothing. And you're like, like, yeah, I'm actually things are going good now. So right, well, so that was kind of like uh, like Jordan Peterson was like that to some extent. I felt like, yeah, and I, like I really I liked what he was making doing. My bed. Yeah, no, right. And you're like, th like he'd be like, you know, forget about the problems of the world. You have to clean your room, and you're like, excellent advice for Cleans a 22 room. year old. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing: <laughs> my room's ass. clean. Yeah, yeah. Like my room's clean. My yeah. kids' rooms are clean. Cleans so like room. now, let's talk about the fucking world. You know, yeah, what I mean? run like, a successful like, business. Yeah, like I'm, now. I'm okay. Good advice for starting off. But now let's fucking talk about something else. And um, so that's like, there, there's, it's almost like getting, even getting Donald Trump elected was, I think it was a probably more good than bad in that there needed to be some jolt yeah. to like the system, but then it just fucking made everyone go more crazy. And now it's like, all right. You know, you always go, okay, what, do we, what do we want to do now? Like, yeah. what are we at? Where are we going from here? Because this is now from in a lot of different ways. You're like, OK, so what are we doing? We're printing six trillion dollars a year and we're flirting with a nuclear war and we're locking down our fucking country and we're 30 trillion dollars in debt. And the whole culture is just completely dissolved. And you're like, OK, so what's the plan? Trump again? <laughs> Trump, is Trump again really the, the answer to that? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't you know. And I do. I. I don't know, man. I, I, I'm interested. Two. I'm interested to see where this all goes. Well, it sounds like Dave Smith's the answer. That's yeah, I mean, yeah. if it's who is, you know? I don't think I'm the answer to anything. Like, who's I, who's the favorites right now uh, for the Republican DeSantis? I mean, I think the favorite is still Trump, probably. Is it, is but it, I think DeSantis is like a fucking not far outside. Not far. Like it'll be know, like shot. jockeying. And then what? Like, I guess Biden said he's. Is but he says he is, but what, everyone 82? around him, everyone around him seems to be like, maybe. Well, then, yeah, I think maybe. that one of the biggest things where you know someone's not going to run is all the main mag, like the main publications start saying something bad about them. Like you'll see like Vice do a thing about how Biden's actually not doing that good. And you're like, oh, did they, did the memo get out that he's out? Like yeah. it kind of feels like that. Well, I thought I saw a thing. Like it's always one day I mean, the way the like, economy is going to. hundred like, articles about how this yeah. guy's bad. Like it happens like that. Well, this yeah. is all just like, yeah, I don't yeah. know this at all. This is all just complete conspiracy. Like, 
like speculation. <laughs> so I don't know if this is true, but I don't know if you guys saw like a couple weeks ago, there was like a big, you know these stories in like major publications run based on leaks? Yeah. Like they're like un unofficial sources in the FBI say blah, blah, blah. And so th there was a story in the, in the Washington Post that was just like unofficial sources in the FBI say that um, Hunter Biden could be charged with all of these crimes. And I, my initial me. thought is that that's the establishment letting Joe Biden know, like just being like, oh, hey, motherfucker, like that's like, deep we're protecting your boy, but we don't have to. Yeah. So like, just so you know, it's you know, like that's, that's how I take it. I don't know if that's right or not, but nah, I take it I like him being like, hey, look, your son could spend the rest of his fucking life in prison. Or you could play ball. You could just do what we and tell you to do. Your son's a drug addict who might rat on his dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. And maybe there is oh. an implication like you could be go down too. Yeah, but you're like well, you're someone. Gonna... So I, I think that's kind of almost like they're like, look, if we don't want you to run again, you're not going to fucking run again. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. And, I can't and, imagine yeah. many. And again, the way the economy is going, like who knows what it's going to be like in six months, let alone two years. Like we could be facing a absolutely completely different scenario. Yeah, we're in a real, real the, precarious like the nerve position. of him too to be like. The the CPI or whatever was like went down like point one percent and he's like it's unchanged You're like it's still at eight percent yeah and he's just like well it's like it's basically he said, yeah yeah that's he goes, crazy he goes he goes, he goes yeah he says, we're doing he goes, great inflation unchanged. like you know and the way Biden does it he goes inflation's at zero yeah it's let zero. me repeat that again <laughs> zero and you're like dude. It has gone up zero yeah, in the last yeah, month. month, but over the year, it's the highest in forty years. Yeah, <laughs> like that's insane. You know the balls, and it works too, though. So I would say a well, lot of nobody knows how shit works. Yeah, no one knows any of this shit, Do They, yeah, that's what they we were talking about. They literally did, had a headline where there was like inflation. Uh, got so bad, so to to help stop it, they're gonna hand out transfer. They're gonna like yeah. hand everyone payments. Yeah, and he goes, where does inflation? that come from? <laughs> but it's hard. It's hard. To, <laughs> inflation's an interesting thing when it, uh, particularly when it spills over to like the CPI and like prices are actually rising. It's it's one of those things that's much harder to hide yeah. from people. Like who? When your average everyone, person goes and the thing they think they buy every day for the is, last is year. all of a sudden up, you know? Like and there is a weird know? like us uh, like kind of a mental component to inflation too because a lot of businesses are going to be like, well, I'm expecting prices to go up, so I'm just going to raise my prices now. That, so well, then there happens. isn't even actual inflation for their, like, uh, whatever their costs and products or whatever, but then they're just like, we're just going to raise it, expecting it, and then everything's just more expensive now. Yep, there's, there's no dollar slice pizza anymore. There, yeah, yeah. Like that, a, like, literally Joe Biden killed dollar no, slice pizza in gross, New York. The price of groceries. Oh, yeah, he crossed the line. <laughs> is, no, if you, if you go to your grocery store, the price of everything is way up, or so my wife tells me. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't do it. I'm not going to do it myself. Or, she, you know, yeah, yeah, as you go. I, mean, I assume she's telling the truth. You go, hey, did you spend a thousand dollars shopping? You go, yeah, Biden's <laughs> fucking nuts. Goddamn, Biden's America. I, I, five bananas is ninety dollars. Can you believe <laughs> she goes, that? She goes, Dave, did you spend six thousand dollars at the strip club? I go, Biden, Biden, the Federal Reserve, <laughs> baby. baby, I love you. I haven't listened. To I would have. This would have been forty-five bucks in ninety-six. Are you kidding? He lived on. But but she does fucking like my wife does all the fucking shopping. But she does. She'll be like. Hey, you know, like she'll be like just telling me, like, hey, you know, these strawberry, these organic strawberries were four dollars and they're nine dollars and fifty cents down. There's like all these things, like, yeah. we're like, and, and I'm, I'm lucky enough that you know, I'm not really in a position like where I'm like, it, oh yeah. my god, sure. but you look at that and you go, By the way, I try, I to, I try to imagine, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. This is how every podcast goes at some point. He's it's okay, he's the piss man, but um, wow, and it's not even supply chain, remember? I, guess, I, I like to think that's like the opposite of like, uh. Like, you know, Carson, if he yeah. liked you, he'd give you, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, if Ryan doesn't like you, he just goes, yeah, I got yeah, 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 I'll go never see him again. I'll just He's just, gone. like, downstairs, just, like, on his phone. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's doing a set right now. <laughs> like, it's just out. Yeah, but remember, it's just jumping on yeah. a bucket. Remember, it's like, so they were like, it's all supply chain. They go, like, supply chain's all fucked up, COVID, all this stuff. That's why everything's so expensive. And you go, okay, well, that's kind of over. Right, like it's, it's like we're not we're we're not saying that anymore. And I I think there probably is something to the fucking truth of the supply chain. But you're like, but even that, you'd go like, okay, well, like I don't know, fucking, I'm I'm 39. I'm gonna be 40 next year. So I've been alive for a little while. Like, why has the supply chain never been an issue before? Yeah. Like, we've always needed shit. 
There's always been fucking ports and trucks and fucking factories and all this shit. So why did it fuck up? It's like, oh yeah, because you fucking locked down the entire world. Yeah, they world. locked down the whole world. And then, but also China, like they were locking down their country. Yes, yeah, no, I'm not saying, I'm saying lots of countries did it. But you locked down all of the major industrial countries and printed trillions of dollars. And all of them did this too. Like all the European central banks fucking yeah. followed with us. So, okay, you stopped producing and started printing money. And that led... To price inflation. <laughs> yeah. Who? Like, okay, have, well, yeah, uh, yes, who obviously. Thunk it's it. like that fucking simple. And then, like, to try to even make it like there's anything else happening here. And they go, well, you know, the real problem is that Putin invaded Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's really what fucking. I mean, at least we don't live in fucking Europe. Jesus <laughs> Christ. I never realized, like, the crazy difference between uh, natural gas prices in Europe and uh, like the US it's like triple the price or something there yeah well it's, and that's wild. changed that's changed a lot like in the last few years but they're really like you remember uh, it, it's weird how it went in the same way that like if you had said like five years ago they're gonna do lockdowns you'd have been like that sounds ridiculous yeah but then they it happened and yeah. you're like well I guess that's a thing that can happen and in the same way like I remember when AOC first pr uh, proposed the Green New Deal and, like a lot of people were like ah ha she's a dumb bitch yeah. she doesn't understand <laughs> how an economy works and now they're like implementing it everywhere and you're like oh <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. Oh, I and guess if you this isn't at the time, it's the whole thing where people are like, "Don't worry." Like, you know, if you said, "I don't know about this," parents like, "Yeah, don't worry." Like, you're crazy, it's man. Cool. It's like it's your like your wife or your girl. She says something, you're like, "No, it's gaslighting." You're like, "You're crazy. It's not gonna happen." And then it's like happening. You're like, oh. it's, we're just gonna write it down and sign it. But like, don't flip out about what happened. We do this all it's, the it's, time. It's literally on the level of them being like, you know. It's, it's very weird because there's a lot of things we fucking we're really we take a lot of shit for granted like that's kind of like where we're at in the level of society we just take a lot of shit for granted and it's impossible not to how you do know? you of course yeah like, it's just it's like, all relative like I actually the, the idea people. the idea that like fucking when you go to the atm the cash is going to come out and someone else will accept that oh, cash yeah. it's just something you you know you turn the light switch on and the lights go on because that's how it works directions yeah. you are like, probably the only one that i feel like i'm constantly don't like when i'm like lost and i found someone and it actually sorts out i actually still have it in my head like that i'm old enough to be like Man, like imagine I didn't have this. Like oh, I do think that yeah, I think that's the only one that I think about it a lot. Right. And sometimes Uber Eats maybe. And that so that but even that so that's the <laughs> shit. I, I I I'm with you on that. But that's the shit that like we're of the age where this wasn't always we here. Had to flip. Yeah. But then there's shit that like when I'm talking about you flip a light switch and that makes the lights go on. Of course. That is just how the world works. Of sure. course. This yeah. little white switch gets flipped up and these lights go sure. on. But we don't think about how much work there is no. to go into that. And what they're attacking. And I don't right now. plan to either. And, well, yeah, yeah. And what the the so whole shut the fuck basis, up and do the generic. <laughs> but the whole basis of advanced society is that we have fucking power. Yeah, like that's the whole thing. If we don't have that, none of this fucking works anymore. Right. And they're actually attacking that. They're going, you shouldn't burn fossil fuels. And you're like, okay, but that's how then what? the lights go on. Yeah. And they're like, well, we should do it in a different way, like wind or solar. And you're like, okay, but there's not enough of that and it's not to power any advanced no. country. I mean, you know what's fucked like, up when Elon Musk is like the guy selling electric cars is like, no, we do need to be burning fossil yes. fuels. He's like, we're not like there yet. Because there's no, it's not even, if you actually like look into this shit at all, it's not even like there's any debate. It's like the question is, do you, do we all want to live like people in Nigeria or do we want to keep burning fossil fuels? Yeah. Sure. That's the, that's the only debate. That's I like, feel a, like, like it's the a, there's no, now if you say, hey, should we keep burning fossil fuels and like eventually try to find something else that we can transition off of that could still support advanced societies, yeah. fine. Which it seems like we are on that path. Yeah. It's, it's just, not like it's going to be next year, but it's, no, it'll I mean, be it's, at some point. Maybe in 30 years sure. or something. I don't know. Which is like, but not if you're talking about getting off fossil fuels tomorrow and you're answer isn't we're building nuclear plants everywhere then there, there's simply just no way to have no, first no. world else, countries you know what else would work like just kill everyone no yeah, no that, that they're would, like oh is that, is that yours can i say that <laughs> <laughs> you're like, well that would be better for the earth yeah. so that, i've been i've been idea. i've been gluing my hand to paintings oh yeah just to figure this expedite the whole process that's i i do think that like if, if they had any sense of humor at that museum when the people glued their hands to the paintings really? they would have just like like uh, section it off and say they're the part of the exhibit <laughs> now. And like, no, like two guys come in in suits and like take the painting away. Yeah. And then you go, that's the exhibit. Two girls what with if, their hands glued to the wall. And, and they're like they, themselves. They threw soup 
on the painting yeah on the painting well that's themselves. like their new thing is they either they go to like sporting events and stuff or they'll go to museums and then they girls they, at sporting events don't you remember the WNBA I'll protest game? that <laughs> I'm there doing my own protest they go and they'll like zip tie their hand to like a railing on the court or something or like they do all that stuff or they'll glue oh, I saw that remember one. at the yeah, WNBA the game ball. they glued their hand to the court right and like right. all this shit or whatever I, and I feel like, like the punishment paintings. for gluing yourself to anything should be that the people come in should glue more of you to it. Yeah. That's what I like mean. Like they should just put more glue. They're like, oh Lean no, how right. are we going to get you off? And then just put glue on your face accident. and push your face accident. against it. Yeah. Like, oh, all right, <laughs> all right, yeah. Guess what? You live here now. Okay. All right, so yeah, that's just it. set the lights out. Like, okay, guys, we're you here. wanted this, and then just credits come up. <laughs> They get just like the number one like elementary school bully in America, like a mercenary to come in, just like fuck with you now. <laughs> hey, environment girls, you love the environment so much. Here's some dirt. <laughs> yeah, take take some more environment. It's your favorite thing. Just poison ivy. Oh yeah, this is oh, it's all natural. Don't worry. Literally, yeah. too, it's like funny because they like their whole thing is like, yeah, we have this like message, and you're like. And then you hear and you go like, I, I guess or whatever, but like, it's not working. Like nobody is being like, oh yeah, gluing your hand to this thing. We really do need to get off fossil fuels. Like people are just like. Well, it's like all the people like that are, uh, not all, but there's a tons of people and like with tons of money in Silicon Valley that also like agree that they're just like, there's a, people putting billions of dollars into companies to try to make like energy a different way and cleaner and uh -huh. blah, blah, but it's like, yeah, they're like, well, this doesn't happen tomorrow. And they're like, hey, why don't you just invent a new way to rule, run the world? And everyone's kind of like, yeah, we are kind of trying. And they're like, tomorrow or more paintings go. <laughs> right. And he's like, what? you're not even living in like, it, it, it'd be like a guy who works at a fucking construct, you know, on a construction site and his wife comes home and he's like, if you don't make a million dollars a year by tomorrow, I'm walking out. And the, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. almost like, it's like we take for granted that we have to have the life we have now. So let's do that. But without any bad stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, oh, okay. Well, there's just there's but, no trade offs. Like, no, Nothing there's a has lot. Of, right. There's a lot that goes into yeah. this, and th that's where I think there's a thing where, like, if we didn't, like, if you lived like a, uh, you know, if we lived 150 years ago, a lot of the shit is much more obvious. Like, if you went like, well, you know, to slow the spread of this virus, I need you to stop working for three months. You'd be like, we'll starve. Yeah. yeah like, we'll starve to death if we do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But today they go, I want you to stop working for three months, and I don't want there to be any costs. And it that feels a little po bit feels more possible. possible because we're so removed from, like, the prospect of, like, starving Kinda. to death. Yeah. But you're like, okay, maybe we won't starve to death, but it's still going to cost something. There's no, like, there's no way to do that and not be like, okay, but shit, you're going to be way poorer in three years than you are right now. Oh, okay. that's just it. Yeah, you're that's like, it. yeah, you're, you got, what was it, the stimulus in America? 1400 bucks? Yeah. One yeah, time? Some, you're, something people, like that. Yeah, something yeah. like that, but you're like, yeah, this is gonna cost, like your grocery bills are $1,400 a month higher right now, so how'd there that work go. out? <laughs> we don't have a sponsor this episode, but it is brought to you by patreon.com slash the boys cast, where a new fire episode comes through every week, and when we get to 2,000 patrons, we will be doing the Bugathlon. The Bugathlon! Bum, 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 bum! Bugman! versus Bugman yes in the feet to see who's the real Bugman and we're going to be recording it and putting it on the Patreon yes. yeah. I was in a this weird reality show that my friend did like 15 years ago and it was like a Canada's <laughs> Next Top Gay <laughs> And they robbed you. <laughs> let me tell you, Should've you won, were man. you were Canada's <laughs> next top guy. <laughs> no, it was a, a show where you had to go. It, it's an Andy show, and they basically didn't have good contestants, so they were like, "Can you guys do it?" Because I'm wacky, right? <laughs> and then basically you go in and uh, you know have to walk through roaches and all this. It's like one of those. And at the end of it, you won. And me and my friend won because we were in a warehouse blindfolded. But in my mind, I'm like. Yeah, but it's my buddy's show. I know how these things work. So, like, we won because, like, I knew it was nothing. And it was kind of like, but that, that's how everyone feels about everything. You know yeah. what I mean? They're like, yeah, obviously nothing actually, the government's not going to let anything actually bad happen to yes. us. Yeah, so but we it's like the do yeah. whatever we want. Like, I feel like that's kind yeah, of. Yeah, it's for people who think, like, the government's infallible. And you're like, no, it's just like a bunch of people. Yeah. Yeah. Who are like really go walking through like uncharted waters here? Do you see when and they're Rogan, throwing shit at the wall? They're just like I don't know. Do you see when uh, Rogan was talking to the guy who uh, was who started uh, Rolling Stone magazine? He was arguing that the I the saw the internet, clip of that that guy. people are not happy with that they, guy. They go that he was arguing the internet should be uh, regulated by the government. And, and right? Rogan did a great fucking job. And Rogan was like, "Wait, so by the government?" 
like you're saying, like the same people who like said there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq should regulate the internet and say what's true and what's not true. And he was like, well, there was, were some people who said that, but I think the government can do good things. And he went, and, and there was one moment where Rogan went like, so politicians? And he goes, I'm not saying politicians, I'm saying the government. Yeah, he was like, who do you think they are? And he was like, wait, so th that's, there's a difference to you? <laughs> yeah. Like th there's a distinction? Right. Between, because when you say politicians, you're like, no, 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 not those scumbags, yeah. but the government. Uh -huh. like, but that's what it is. They like say the it's government politicians like, it's, and bureaucrats. like it's Santa. Yeah, like goes, the government. You're you're like, like, what? Right, because it sounds so much better. Yeah. Like if I just said the Democrats and the Republicans. Yeah, you'd be like, no. The lawyers in Washington, <laughs> yeah. D.C. You're like, oh, those monsters? Yeah. But if I go the United States of America. Sure. Like, oh, no, those guys. And are again, good. you those probably go like people. in that sense, you go, well, the United States, like, look at all this good shit we got. Yep. It's like the government got us here, and you're like, no, yes, but like, no. Well, that's the thing, right? And, not these, and it wasn't these people. They were at Michelle. best guardrails for bad things, yeah. and probably at worst, they were hindering. Yeah. And then they weirdly, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. but the, and then weirdly, there's this real like distinction that gets completely lost between like a government and the country. You know, like as if it's all like the same thing. And we'll, we'll do this with other countries where we're like, guys, like China's pretty fucked up, yeah. or China's doing this. And you're like, no, China's not doing this. Like, there are people like in China who have nothing. Like, there are fucking, they're actually way more victimized by the Chinese oh, government no, than like will ever elite, be. Right. But they're like just the like some dude. Elites you know, in the CCP or something. Yes. Like that. Like, dude, this guy, this guy, uh, Lou Rockwell, who's a fucking genius, uh, who's the, he created the Mises Institute. Uh, it was a great, this great like organization. And he wrote this piece like in, I think it was in April of 2020. And he was just talking about like all the like China hysteria. And there was like, just so you guys know, he was like, China, China is not your enemy. Yeah. And the Chinese government is an evil government. And they're the enemy of the Chinese people. But like China didn't do anything to you. No. You know what I mean? Like their current and goes, administration. Yes. Yeah. And he goes, and then he goes through this list of like all the, and he goes, there were these three Chinese doctors who blew the whistle on COVID, who if they anyone had listened to them would have stopped this whole thing before it spread, and they all got fucking thrown in camps. Yeah, you know what There's I mean by the done. Chinese yeah. government. And so you Ugh. realize like it's almost like a thing where like that's how they justify all this shit. Like, well, China's bad, so let's drop a bomb on this city. Yeah, and you're yeah, like, yeah. who are you gonna fucking kill? <laughs> yeah, that, like, can. just some person, no, really. just some dude who had nothing to do with the system any more than we have any more than Joe Biden is us. Yes, you know what I mean. Like it's the it's guy like, having like, him hating his boss and coming over yeah. and beating his kids. So <laughs> so then they'll be like, well, the government's done pretty good. I mean, look over the last hundred years, the country did this and this. And you're like, if yeah, the country did that, yeah, yeah. The, country. Like, the government didn't do that fucking shit. No. I mean, maybe they did something. Basically they allowed nothing. the people to do that stuff. Yeah. Essentially, like, they really what happened? Like what what happened over the last fucking thirty years that was really great? And you'll be like, well, there's some doctor invented some new medicine, or someone did this or that or whatever, and like life got way better. And you know, my TV is way better than my TV used to be. And you're like, yeah, that's all true, but that was just what people did. Yeah, what the government did? You're like, they killed a million people in Iraq. <laughs> you know, <laughs> for no I mean, reason. I guess they built some roads with the yeah. tax tax dollars. So I they guess. built some roads uh, after there was leftover money from the money they used to murder people in Iraq. Yeah. Yeah. Roads kind of suck, to be yeah. honest. They're pretty, they're pretty shitty roads, yeah. but they're there, I guess. <laughs> sure. So. Do you? Hey, do you? Um, what do you think of like this, like thought about libertarianism? Because like, I always kind of, when I'm thinking about, you know, how I like feel or how I fit myself in or whatever. A lot of times, I'll think like, to me, a lot of times, I'll see like liberty or freedom or whatever as like a medicine more than like a philosophy where it's like sometimes you're kind of like you see certain things you're like yeah this needs more you know that and but like sometimes you see a thing and you're like this actually might benefit from a little more order you know what i mean so it's like uh do you see that kind of thing you know like in a household you could see think about like even just a household even where it's like everyone's doing it, it's all wacky and you're like well this place doesn't necessarily need more freedom it might actually benefit from a little sure. more structure or yeah, no, so to me, I look at it like, um, like when you're talking about like political freedom, like freedom from the government, you know, it's like, so to your point, like, yeah, there's, there's situations, right, where there might be like, I don't know, there might be a household that's like way too fucking rigid and stringent with their rules. And you go, you guys could benefit from like a little more freedom of like sure. to do what you want to do and like, and then there might be a, a household where everyone's like fucking crazy and drug addicts or something you guys you guys need some more rules yeah that you can't do that so like that's true with chaos versus order there's always a balance but when you talk about just like um whether legally 
you support like being a libertarian or not. The, the only question that it comes down to is who should go to jail? Like that's all to me okay. being a libertarian is. It's like, and the very basic question is like, who should fucking men with guns come and grab and throw in a cage and fucking enslave? Well, in yeah. so, so, so the point is like, it's not like should heroin be legal is not a question of like, should everyone do heroin? You know, it's like, the point is just like, should, can you throw someone in a cage so that's for doing heroin? Kind of or it, yeah. should it just be like, there should be some other solution other than fucking yeah. someone with a gun puts a gun to your head and goes, I'm gonna shackle you yeah. and throw you in a cage. I yeah. mean, it's essentially to a lazy, easy solution too, to be like, that's the easiest yes. solution really is to be like, yeah, we're just gonna get our henchmen to throw this guy in the cage yes. problem solved. And it doesn't really work very well. No. And so to me, I go, like, if you go, who should, who who is it like, morally acceptable to fucking like put a gun to their head and go I'm putting you in chains and I'm throwing you in a fucking cage right now women? and I would women yeah um, minorities sure <laughs> Jews Jews I, minorities, minorities. Uh, no but I would say someone who's like a violent criminal yeah someone maybe someone who's like a um, like a property criminal you know someone so who like there was no government, stole all your shit work? Well, with no government at all? I mean, it's, Or I guess it's not. not. No, obviously, that's like not actually the... Yeah, you're right. You're pretty good at like saying, I don't want to have these like whimsical fucking conversations about like... A no, I'm just saying like exist. stop throwing fucking people in jail yeah. for okay. fucking non-violent victimless things. Course, yeah. now, that, now that, but to your point, that that's doesn't mean anything else. That's more like college kid like full, uh, maybe conversation that I was Well, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. But I mean, even that's like, it, like, it's an interesting idea of like, what? well, would someone do that if it wasn't the government? I don't know. I mean, from my perspective, I see most of the time... You know, like, like when you had the riots in 2020, the I think cops that were doing anything. The, the anyway. cops the were peaceful actually, protests. The, yes, the peaceful You're protests. Right. But what the cops were doing was stopping anyone who was defending their own fucking property from fucking defending it and r arresting them. See, well, that wasn't more than they arresting them. So, so I'm almost like, if the government didn't do it, it seemed like there were a lot of people willing to fucking do it to sure, just be like, yeah. Yeah, all you, all you'd really need is to have no fucking gun laws and let a few people click some AK-47s and be like, get the yeah. fuck off this store. And that now and that only saying, happens in America. I'm not like, saying that's fucking well. perfect. I'm just saying of all. Like what's better than the other alternative, and the the better with like we said, it's all trade offs. The better thing is just like let be a free society. It uh, also isn't like there is also the argument probably maybe to you it doesn't, but I feel like it changes a little bit as technology exists and like the, we are living now, not a hundred years ago. Because I think in my mind, you go if you said this government had like no power, it'd be like. Okay, so in six months the mafia is going to own this city. Like yeah. it feels like a power vacuum. You just have criminals taking well, over. Well, so yeah. But, but uh, people go, in, actually more likely what would happen would probably be now. You go, no, Amazon now owns this city or something. Well, I think that yeah. um, I think so. From my perspective, it's almost like the opposite of that. I go, I think a government is like if you say the worst case scenario of the mafia taking over that is is? is what a government is sure like what a gut what the essence of a government is is the most powerful mafia that took over the whole fucking thing do you think they're worse than the actual mafia i mean you're not gonna get like well i was just gonna say you're not gonna get tortured and then i'm like all right i guess you're gonna yeah i mean dude by <laughs> what by what <laughs> possible like protection money is like literally just well, well, property look, tax just remove money is probably more. right remove yourself from protection like, money is property like taxes. yeah it's like property taxes well, yeah they are the mafia so it, look yeah. remove yourself from whatever emotional connection you have to the word mafia and to the word government Organized by what by what possible objective metric could you say that the government is not worse than the mafia like if you want to go how many people they kill how much money they a steal. A jury of your peers would probably be the first one I would think of. Okay, sure. So you have a jury of your peers. I don't have a jury of like his, you know, three buddies to decide. I have I get to have a public trial. To sure. So you you Maybe I, I suppose I would say that a jury of your peers is a is a pretty is an illusion that they go so we will make up the rules we will have a government appointed judge and then we'll, we will present this illusion of like oh but the people decided whether or not you should go to jail for 15 years over having a fucking but ounce sometimes of cocaine you can beat the system, in your no, pocket no, sometimes they'll be like yes, a guy yeah. but you're actually even but a, you could beat the mafia system by just fucking yeah. paying them off dude oh, it's God. all listen okay. man I go, I'm back in. <laughs> so, well, I'm not saying, by the way, I'm not like defending the fucking mafia. I'm just saying that it's like, basically I'm saying that they are the mafia. They're, they're yeah, That's just, what it is. Yeah. It's a, what, The government is a gang that just fucking won. 
Yeah. That one out so much that it's like there's no other fucking gang that could even fuck with them. They have complete territorial control, and the other gangs are just rivals to the government. Yeah. So like the the bet the, the like look the mafia. It's like no, that's the Scarboni brothers down in two streets over. Yeah. <laughs> the fucking like the the cops are a fucking gang. The fucking For military sure. is a gang. Yeah. I mean, like, what is the it's fucking all gangs. like? What is the fuck? You ever watch like uh, when George W. Bush uh, and Saddam Hussein? Well, they they had like dueling like videos that they had right before the war, and George W. Bush basically said uh, he goes Saddam Hussein, you have twenty four hours, uh, but right before we launched the war in Iraq, he made this video address to the nation and to the world, and he goes Saddam Hussein, you and your sons have twenty four hours to surrender yourself to the international community, or we will invade Iraq and overthrow you, and then Saddam Hussein, and this is one of the most gangster sh things I've ever seen in my life. Saddam Hussein had a response video to Your George OG W. Bush, videos. and he goes, it, 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 "I thought this was so fucking gangster. I'm not a fan of Saddam Hussein, but this was pretty badass." Like he goes, first album. and he goes, <laughs> he goes, George W. Bush, you have 24 hours to surrender yourself to the international community. <laughs> he goes, he goes, if you invade, we will fight this war and we will win this war. And I remember watching that and be like, oh shit, you are fucked. Yeah. And it's not because he's more right or That's wrong or anything. That's a big my dad's better it's than your just, dad combo. It's just like, no, this fucking gang, the United States of America will Fuck up your Iraqi gang. The Donnie, and they Donnie, did. Yeah, he's the, the, and they did. Uh, Benny uh, from the Bronx. You didn't yeah. like that. Oh. And these motherfuckers, like all this shit. You know, you ever see like the? Uh, you remember um, the partnership for a drug-free America? When we were kids, they used to always run that. This just say no. On, just say this no. This is your brain on drugs. Like, yeah, yep. Yeah, all those guys, right? They used to run all those commercials, and they were like, uh, you know, you could almost argue, like you'd be like, oh well, here's my argument. I actually think that pot isn't as bad as alcohol or tobacco or whatever but the partnership for a drug free america was funded by alcohol and tobacco companies and pharmaceutical crazy, companies right? it's, it's yeah. not like they got it wrong it's just fucking gangster I mean, the shit. Yeah. They're just like, yo, you, this is our fucking competition. And here's who's and so in charge. It's like tainting the it. other guy's drug. I mean, the crazy thing, though. Yeah, yeah Alex, that's all it is. The Alex Jones thing from last week where his settlement or whatever, nine, and then you see the thing with like the Sacklers or whatever, like the Purdue Pharma who make, makes OxyContin, and like they killed uh, tens of thousands yep. of people. Their settlement was like $645 million. Right. And so Alex Jones got $945 million. And, like He didn't kill one person. They killed... Well, well it's a, right. Right, so it's almost like so we're sitting here going Same with Martin Scrawley versus the other people. Oh, whatever, but they're like, yeah. they just yes. show them. So but, yeah. Right, so guys like that who are like kind of outside the connected system, they get demonized. And it's not that they shouldn't be demonized. It's just kind of like, you know, if, if there was like, you know, the, the mafia is coming around and they're just kind of like, hey, they're going to a pizza place and they're like, hey, listen, yeah, there's a nice place you got here. Yeah, maybe you buy sauce from us or your whole fucking place gets burned down. Yeah. And then someone else has some different sauce and they're like, this sauce is fucking killing people. And you're like, yeah, but the sauce you're selling is killing more people. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no, but like we're just gonna focus yeah. on how yeah. this sauce is yeah, killing more people. So it's just it's all of it is fucking gangster shit. And like you yeah. said, property taxes, income tax. Hey, you fucking like if you take a step back and think about like the fucking income tax, and you go, real, what's I, happening here? I'll tell you. In February, I took a fuck. Or March, I took a step back and thought about the income tax. <laughs> well, yeah. yard stare thinking I a, about it. I took Dude. a big step. Well, back. We, when you start fucking making money, you really <laughs> grow like. Huh. But look, if there was like, let's say, let's say we didn't have an income tax. I walk Let, around in New York and I see public employees and I tell them I pay their salary now. <laughs> yeah, well, you should, you're right. I hit them on the head. I go, you work for me, pal. <laughs> but the truth is that it's really quite the opposite. That you work for them. Yeah. Like very literally. You work for them. You work and pay them your fucking money. That's and you exactly can have it. You can hold on to this illusion that they work for you, but that's just the bullshit they tell you. Except you can't the truth tell them is you chair. work and then they take your money and give it to them. Yeah. But Look, imagine, right? Imagine we didn't have an income tax in America. And then imagine, let's say the Soviet Union still existed, right? And the Soviet Union invaded our free country of America and took over America. And they went, hey, we're installing this new policy, okay? And we're creating this, uh, this bureau called the, the USS IRS. And what we've just decided now is that it's a crime to work. And the punishment for that crime is a fee. And the more you work and the more you produce, the higher your fee is. Sure. And you, you remember how you used to have a, a Fifth Amendment? 
where you had the right to not incriminate yourself, well, now you are mandated to incriminate yourself every single year. Yeah. You must turn over all of your documents to the central <laughs> USS IRS government, then we will go through all of your documents, and if you miss one fucking apostrophe or decimal on that, we can fucking throw you in jail. We could go back 20 years on you and ruin all your fucking shit, and we will never tell you what you owe us, but you That's must report to part. us, yeah. and we will tell you if you're wrong. And like, if you just saw that and some foreign government did that to us, you'd be like, oh, that's, so yeah. we live under a totalitarian dictatorship. Like, that's just, that's what it is. But it's just because we did it to ourselves, everyone's like, that's the price. That's, we yeah, voted that's the for fucking it. Yeah. for society. But really, it's the most fucked up shit ever. Yeah. You fucking, you charge people a fee for being a productive member of society? Like yeah. it's, it's insane. That's, it's, that's the most gangster shit in the world. So fine, you could even respect it and be like, you guys are some fucking... You're what some gangster to some degree. Yeah, yeah. I gangsters. always try to play the game, not the you know get yeah. too bogged down. Of course, and then they go. Also, we're going to educate your kids to love us. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like it's pretty fucking gangster, right. but that's what it is. It's gangster yeah. shit. Like, do they have? I was wondering yeah. for the libertarian. Like, are there other countries that have strong libertarian movements? Is that a pretty U.S. centric thing? It's uh, like I know mean, Canada has like nothing like that. No, nah, India has a lot of those like Ayn Rand guys. Dude, Who's, all the dudes I grew up who were. Uh, like a lot of Indian dudes that grew up, like they, it, their like, you know, college kid, white boy thing yeah. was very. Uh, they loved like Ayn Rand shit. But like other like parties in other countries. There's there's you know there's more like there's there's like freedom movements in different areas in different countries and some countries are like very free in some areas and very not free in other areas. Yeah. There's like a place like Singapore is like fucking like really free in a they're lot like of economic big ways. Haven right now, but right? Yeah. yeah, like economically, business wise, they're I mean, very they free. But amazing, socially, no. socially, they're like you fucking spit gum on the street. Of course, you're gonna yeah. fucking have a problem. Remember that kid so got like, caned? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of, it's like, it's very weird, man. But really, America was, you know, we were the freest country in the world, and that's yeah, what we fucking Yeah, but they're all, because I know, like, there's so many countries, you, you ever see, like, they'll have, it'll be, like, a blip on the news, because nobody really cares, but they'll have, like, an election. And, like, so many countries have, like, 10 parties. You know, even Canada has, you go on a ballot, there's so many parties. I guess here, how many parties, when you go to a uh, vote, are, like, listed on a ballot? I think most of the time, not many. I not mean, many. even the Libertarian Party is not on every ballot, and yeah. they're, like, the biggest third party. But but even that, we just kind of have a system here in America where it's kind of like, like there might be some other like faggoty parties on that. Ballot, yeah, but, but you know, you know, you got two choices. Yeah, so let's, exactly. let's fucking, man, yeah, that's let's kind of like the shit. thing. You guys know what we're doing. So it's, you know, but uh, there's there's good and bad to all that. You know, when you have like a ton of parties, you get, you get some real kooky party that ends up taking yeah. over. So I always laughed actually with the whole thing where like countries like America where they're like, we're so much better and freer than China. And you're like, you have one more party. <laughs> it's like you're that is a good literally party. one you're, party. even when they say they go, they're a one party state. And yeah. you're like, you're a two party yeah, state. Yeah, you have one more. And the two parties are very similar. Yeah. Like, you're like, well, it's, it's, technically it's a hundred percent more parties. That's a, you know? that's a really fucking good way to put it, man. I guess the like the whole benefit was that is almost it like keeps people calmer because there's an illusion of like we'll get we'll get it back next time. But you uh, see that right, and that's been the whole thing. At least it's so clear in the last like 20 years, like in the 21st century, right, where it's like fucking George W. Bush just fucked up, and everyone acknowledges. I mean, everyone, but like 70 percent of the country just goes, yeah, he. fucked fucked up and so we're going with Barack Obama because yeah. fucking we can't Republicans fucked up Democrats are good and then Barack Obama just does more of the same and they go he tagged him in like a that. wrestling tag team yeah. party <laughs> yeah they go fuck that we're going Trump because yeah. you fucked up they go Trump fuck that we're going Biden but really when you step back you're like oh the same shit has kind of been happening well you can't like, just like put the brakes on everything someone did in the previous administration being like we're ending everything and starting from scratch but the point you never get anything done but they don't even put the brakes yeah. they just accelerate yeah. Like if if the the like if from from Bush to Obama to Trump to Biden was like if you were measuring it like it would be like this it's all yeah. you know it might be going up and down a little bit In but the, the trend thing. is it's going Trends, up like course. where's the fucking spending the debt the military budget the fucking money printing the fu all the like shit that actually matters that no one ever fucking talks about you're like no there's no one really fucks with any of that. Like, yeah. no one really changes anything. Like, you know who fucking uh, Barack Obama's defense secretary was when he first came in? It was Gates, Bush's defense secretary. Yeah. He fucking kept him on. And you know who fucking, like, runs the Treasury Department? Someone who used to work at Goldman Sachs. Oh, like, every fucking time. <laughs> oh, like, uh, the shit that really fucking yeah. matters, no one really fucks with any of that. No. Like, yeah, the bit... 
the uh, the banks like like uh, also I think it actually shows us and other people have said this too but the idea of when the banks were getting mad about stuff online it was like that's who's taking the moral standard that, you know what I mean yeah it's like it's yeah. one of all the people if you look around and you go okay I'm getting a lecture from the government I'm getting a lecture from the banks you go I don't think any of these people should be giving anyone a lecture ever yeah. it's almost the arrogance of banks to not just kind of be like yeah you know what well we know we're not going to get involved here. You know what yeah, I mean? They you like, know what it is? It's the guy that's like cheating nonstop. That's like real vocal about you know publicly. You know, like well, that's, that's exactly right. Though. <laughs> that's exactly right. That's exactly what it is, dude. All this fucking woke shit coming from giant corporations is the exact equivalent of the fucking uh, the Republican congressman who's like these gays He's are like, destroying yeah. society. Who they find blowing some oh, dude so in a fucking nice. truck stop bathroom. <laughs> the that's what it is. Up. <laughs> they're, but they're trying to get out ahead of it and be like look we're the good guys ahead of this moral outrage because what they want is everyone to be fighting over like oh isn't this awful this misinformation online or isn't it so awful yeah. that someone said trans women aren't women let's fucking cancel him and they're like focus on that so you don't focus on the fact that we're raping everyone yeah even if you the misinformation is the funniest one like it sometimes is fun to, like you need to zoom out to kind of remember like how crazy it is because it all becomes normal even if you're even if you yeah. think it's crazy but you go Ever been in a conversation where someone like a you know like a comic or someone will be just like, oh it's crazy like there's misinformation everywhere like and you'll be like what are you talking about like you, like you'll act there I've had conversations with like real people where it's like this is like a real thing that's like they're like stressed out because it's like misinformation and like you think this like, is what are you new? talking about yeah. you think, like, it's like, like yeah man crazy people, fucking like your brain's so fried you're just like they're fucking like, yeah, they watch MSNBC uh, and like the, the misinformation right everywhere. right or is like the misinformation the, touching you like it's yeah. that right it was like, like the election interference remember they were like oh Russia's meddling like how dare they and you're like what do you think America's doing in other countries yeah like you think this is like this one time deal where like Russia's just meddling in American politics but like America's not doing this in probably 40 other countries dude and that shit all was the time always, that shit was yeah. always like they fucking they would say and they would repeat the line over and over again they go Russia hacked our elections like if you ever go look for like a compilation of that on fucking YouTube or whatever you find compilation of every powerful person like saying Russia hacked our election and then like if you ever just start like you're like how did they do that and they're like by interfering in the election. And you're like, how did they do that? Of by but and by the end of it, you go, they play some Facebook ads. Yeah, <laughs> and like that's what the whole thing comes down to. And then it's always like it's like well, well, three different intelligence agencies all said that they interfered in the election. And you're like, okay, okay, fine. Give me the fucking evidence. Like, what did they actually do? And it comes when you get down to it, it's like nothing. No, it's, it's like, like see fucking that, nothing. It's like this guy they in Texas would have voted for Hillary, but then he changed his mind because of a video he saw on Facebook. You're like, you're okay, like, so okay. does my is like if you're influencing someone, is is this podcast hacking an election? Like, what does that mean? Yeah. Like, what does it mean if you change someone's mind because you said something and they were persuaded by that? Like, it's so bizarre. Well, but if they, they had the right opinion like, originally. Well, it's yeah. no, yeah. they're like, I guess we so, do that. right? They're like, so it's so we do that. So it's like it's so weird how these fucking things could be put out and then everyone like just like unthinkingly repeats the same fucking point and they say all these fucking things and man dude I really think and I don't know I, Vladimir Putin's fucked up dude he's a fucked up guy he's a gangster like I say all these guys are gangsters. gangsters if you were watching he's that he's like a, a real movie gangster and he of went, his life like which I don't know if they would yeah make. he's a KGB gangster dude Yo, that's yeah. like, it's the, a very, like when the I say series of him like the El Chapo series that they like make about him if yeah. they stop hating him and they will well isn't it, it easy happen? right even when I was saying it's before crazy. When, when I was saying like oh the government are basically gangsters right it's almost like when you say that people go like huh okay because we're thinking of our government but how easy is it for me to convince you if I'm talking about another government like if I was talking about the Saudis and I go they are gangsters yeah. everyone goes of course of course, so of yeah. course they're <laughs> fucking gangsters is Putin a gangster of course so it's almost it's like a religion thing it's like you're an atheist for every other religion yeah. just not for your fucking religion yeah. right so you're like you don't believe in any of that shit you think that's all bullshit but only your one is correct yeah. alright so which you know I'm not saying that it can't be the case but I'm just saying that so th these guys right he is a gangster but at the same time I go with all this shit we've just been fucking with this gangster for years every important person has been saying he stole our elections Fuck. and he did this and he put bounties on russian soldiers heads and he fucking made hunter biden's laptop to fucking put all these lies yeah. that were not, not not we all know are complete bullshit and they're just like saying this over and over and over and then he finally fucking invades his neighboring country and people are like why is he doing this and you're like i don't know stop fucking with him i mean who cares he's got nukes yeah. stop fucking with him for sure yeah and 
again, yeah, they were just like for five years leading up to the whole thing, they were like, he's bad, and they're like, he's just nonstop how bad he is, and then and then eventually, he's but he is, yeah, snaps. he is bad. I think that I mean, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, he but is, but it's like, I think the point is, yeah, you're like. Yeah, you guys all are. Yeah, you're bad too. <laughs> He's bad 5,000 miles away with nuclear weapons. <laughs> sure, yeah. So let him fucking be bad over there and who the fuck cares? Yeah. Like that's, Yo, that's it. <laughs> it's a good point. Like when they make, because it almost it kind of shows a window into the thing. Because if you go, every big like mafia guy, gangster, like, like Pablo Escobar, Get some like a movie made about him where he's the protagonist. Right. Have they ever right. made like a movie where Good Avi's the protagonist? Like where like probably it's, in no Libya politician gets to be the protagonist. Like it's kind of an interesting thing to think like, but Mexican like gangsters like raping kids and murdering people. That guy gets a movie series where he's the protagonist. At right. least they try to tell it accurately. But this you can't. They'll never tell any politics things without propaganda. Well, I love. There's been a few exceptions to that ever. Yeah, well, which I love. Well, I because th- I do think in general, I think like Bush movie, I think. gangster movie. There's like gangster movies and there's like political movies and shit like that. But I I do I think like one of my so I think in The Godfather, one of the fucking greatest lines ever in the history of a fucking movie was when uh fucking uh michael corleone says to Kay, you know and she's like oh you're going into your father's business you said you would never go into his business and he goes uh you know you know my father's a powerful man he goes like a governor or a senator and uh and Kay goes i forget the exact line but she goes do you hear yourself how ignorant you sound michael she goes your father has people killed governors and senators don't have people killed and michael corleone goes who's being ignorant now Kay? Right, <laughs> or who's yeah. being naive now yeah, yeah. something like that there's a line and it's like that's a fucking brilliant line to be like oh yeah really that's yeah, you're the fucking naive one sure and then the other thing i thought was uh what's what's it called with uh before we all found out kevin spacey rapes boys uh House of Cards was of a real course. great one. That was a great fucking little series that caught on where they were just like, yo, we're just going to fucking do a fucking politicians are gangsters. No, no, they'll thing. do that. That really let you fucking know. Like, there's been that. They've been that. There's been that. So that, was, that, that was kind of cool. But then there's a lot of. But I'm you saying, know, like, what's. Oh, you, there's Gaddafi a West, and Pablo Escobar well, series. Well, there's like the West Wing and the American President and the like George these type Bush of movies movie, where. The, the, where with, uh, what's his face? Well, they mock them sometimes. They mock yeah, them. Yeah, like, oh, you're retarded. And then they'll make them hear heroes sometimes but i kind of enjoy the ones where they really make them the gangsters like they're yeah. like no yeah. this is that like this is really just just view them the same way you would anyone else like what is it fuck it like i said before it's just like what is it like what is taxing someone other than just being like hey give me your money or i'll fuck your shit up yeah. mm-hmm. and like oh okay <laughs> and you could say like well they did something with that money that was kind of good with the de blasios and stuff and the and like the Cuomo's and stuff, they don't even pretend to not sound like the mafia no. guys. No, they are. <laughs> well, like why is it such though. an easy transition? It's such an easy transition from so many of those fucking yeah. Ginzo thugs <laughs> to come right into my fucking. All right, I married an Italian. My kids are half Italian. All right, but yeah. but still, yeah. these people have it in their blood. And there's no okay? alternative. I watch my kids every day. Yeah, you right. can't just like move. You can't be like, oh, I don't like the tax policy in this country. I'm going to move to a different country. Like, it doesn't work that way. It worked well. We moved. Yeah, but it wasn't easy. No, it's not like, yeah, they'll, they'll play, they're like you say, okay, you owe us some money though. They'll even like give you like they'll have Night. a gangster. They'll have a gangster attitude with yeah. that too. It's like, oh, you want to move? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, All yeah, right. Yeah. Well, you got in your pockets if you want to sure. move. You know, yeah. like, it's, <laughs> they shake you upside down. Yeah, and then also on top of that, it's like, what happens if I right, don't pay? It's like we put you in a jail and a bunch of guys rape you forever. <laughs> it's not you know? even like you know what I mean. Yeah. The punishment is like, yeah, we put you in a place and then you, we get like the shit kicked out of you for seven years and then raped yeah. and we don't even really stop it that much and that's uh, I love how kind of laugh about that's it that's always like a punchline too <laughs> yeah. I know Kurt had a really good joke about oh, that dude Kurt had the best yeah. I remember that dude when Kurt was a uh, part of the legal system <laughs> that dude he had a thing I don't know if you guys remember there was one do you remember the Law and Order episode where they did about comics making rape jokes? Yeah, I do. And they, they the I do guy, remember that. It was and then the guy turned. It was the me. dumbest thing. I like you couldn't have made it up. No, so it was like, crazy. There was like a guy. And the guys on stage being like, "Both of you, they'll get it whether you like it or not." <laughs> and the crowd's going, ooh, ooh. "Yeah." So, <laughs> so they murdering. start with. Right? I can't even, dude. I can't. If you did, you see this? I think I if did you, a clip. If you it. haven't I seen it, it, I can't exaggerate how retarded it was. <laughs> it starts with comic crushing with that like as if if you went up on stage as a stand up comedian and you went I have all these bitches get raped and they're like ah 
that like as if that would kill yeah. like as if like there wouldn't be anyone in the room who went ah there's not a lot of humor Murdering. there's not a lot of humor behind it's this not, it's not just particularly clever just wishing rape <laughs> yeah. upon yeah, other people that you go on air and so the that's crowd's like crying and everyone's like, so there's there's three steps to this right so the first step of the episode is that that kills that's what yeah. does really good in, in comedy is if you go on stage and go I hope our bitches get raped and everyone's like this guy rocks and then there's just like two girls who are like we're uncomfortable yeah. and like fuck you sluts I hope you get raped and so they get up and walk out and then the second step was that that inspires somebody to go rape that chick because he's like I don't know it seemed pretty cool in the comedy yeah. club and then the third step was that the comic himself is actually a rapist so it turns out he's raping these chicks like the whole thing was like what world are you yeah. living in or any of this and then it was and like and then there's like there's ten cases where shit like this happened it's never been the like comic who's never, been, never in the history of the world has this existed <laughs> no. there, there have been very clean comics who have turned out to rape in their private life yeah, there, but, but, like there, there's never been a rape joke that the message of the joke was I love rape that killed in yeah. a club and no one's ever raped because they heard a joke and about rape Law and Order's whole thing but, is they're always like yeah, we're no, basing no, no, this no, off yes. of a real life That's thing it's extra crazy so, yeah. right, and so it's nothing and then at the end of the episode the moral is like you know the See some order, say people some. being like, yeah, you know, <laughs> it's like some jokes aren't funny. You know, like some jokes are blah blah. But Kurt made this fucking point when he was watching it that was so fucking great, where he goes, he goes, you know how many times I've seen Law and Order, like a regular thing in Law and Order is that one of the things they use to threaten guys, even when they know they're innocent. Yeah. And this is completely accepted. Yeah. Is when they're grilling them, they'll go, guys like you don't do very well in jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and even when they know, yeah. like even as the person watching the show, you know that that guy's not guilty, but he might have some information. Yeah. They're completely fine with you threatening <laughs> rape to extort the information out of that guy. Like be like, I will put you in a hole where I men will that. rape your butt unless you tell me what happened. He goes, okay, this guy did it. And they go, all right, get out of here. Yeah, like, out and, here. and everyone's supposed to be okay yeah, with <laughs> that. Like this is supposed to be yeah, fine. Yeah, that actually kind of how it works. But like a comic making a joke about it is fucked up but you can sit right in front of a man that is so, and be like I didn't even put that be like, together your you go, the same will be, show yeah the same show we'll, it's, countless times we'll go basically your butthole will be destroyed <laughs> yeah. unless you tell me what I want to know yeah, no one will listen to you even and that's just and it and it is it's a punchline yeah, that people get fucking raped in jail. <laughs> that is fucking nuts. On that note, on that note, let's favorite, not go to jail. What's your favorite yeah, libertarian yeah. quote before we go fucking have some uh, hit the fucking I don't know, man. There's a lot of ones that are really fucking good. God damn it, I gotta think of a good one. I feel like I gave better like quotes a, already. Uh, don't steal the government hates competition. Oh, that's a good, good fucking quote. Um, <laughs> Don't steal the government hates competition. Yeah, that's that's, like, these uh, are good t-shirt slogans. Yeah. There's, I, I fucking get Danny it, man, got but a good. I feel like what I should the have t-shirt you got in Nashville? The one we saw. One the t-shirt got which one? Remember we went to the store in Nashville that had like a real like "Don't tread on me" type thing. <laughs> it was like some I don't remember some yeah. something Trump or something. It was funny though. Yeah, yeah. that's Actually, a good one. That, that's fun. I'll go with that. Yeah, let's leave it on that. Don't steal the government hates competition. That's that should be the name of the episode. Don't steal the government hates competition. I like it. All right. Well, thanks for buddy. Yeah, you're Dude, the best, you're the you fucking know. man. I love you guys. I love everything you guys are doing. I'm fucking always yeah, yeah. blown away Likewise, by you guys. You're fucking Thank you, bro. And I, I and I don't know. Oh yeah, we, that won't be online. But uh, I just just get back to plug that I did your thing. But that was it. Uh, we got a little salty on that. I don't think it's going live. We are not putting that out anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I will deny to the death that uh, we did that. Definitely check out part of the problem with Dave Smith, Legion Skanks. All right, peace. Bye. <laughs>